Did you know that heparin is not just a medication? It's actually found naturally in our bodies. We're gonna learn that about that and cytokines today. Come on, I'll show you. Hello and welcome back to White Line Medicine. I'm so glad that you joined me here again on our series that we're doing with allergic reactions and anaphylaxis. So this is actually gonna be our last installment on the pathophysiology side before we dive into the treatments. So make sure you're liking and subscribing, following along because we're about to get to some really good stuff. All right, so today we're gonna be talking about heparin and cytokines. Now, if you haven't watched our previous stuff, make sure you go back and do that and that'll catch you up to where we're at so far. So let's start off with cytokines. Now, with cytokines, we're not gonna dive too deeply into the different specific ones. We're just gonna cover them as a whole. And honestly, there's still a lot we don't know about cytokines. Scientists are still doing a lot of research and discovery on their roles within the immune response and their processes within anaphylaxis. All right, so as I just mentioned, we're not gonna go real specific on the different types of cytokines, but it is really important to understand their role in the immune response that's happening during anaphylaxis. Cytokines themselves actually don't cause many of the symptoms that we're seeing by themselves. They're actually more of a recruiter. So they work to go throughout the body and find other leukocytes. Remember those uh, kind of an umbrella term for white blood cells and it brings them into the immune response, telling them to release their chemical mediators and therefore furthering the amount of inflammation that's happening. Another important thing to realize about cytokines is that they're not just released during the start of anaphylaxis. They actually have a delayed response as well, sometimes even up to hours after the initial bout of anaphylaxis. This is why it's so imperative that even if a patient is treated at home or in the back of an ambulance, at ER, wherever the case might be for anaphylaxis, that they be monitored by a medical professional for at least several hours after the symptoms have resolved. As I said, the symptoms from cytokines are actually that they're recruiters. They come in and they bring in other white blood cells. So if they're coming in, even hours after the initial response and then telling the body to start releasing all these mediators again, it can cause a full-blown anaphylactic reaction again and sometimes even worse than the first time. So let's dive into the last thing here and that's heparin. Now you might recognize heparin as a type of medication that can be prescribed, but for the purpose of this video, we're just talking about the stuff that is naturally found and released within the body. Heparin is created and stored within mast cells and basophils throughout the body. Once it's released after the degranulation process, it goes and acts as what's called a blood thinner. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into the clotting cascade this time, but basically it affects factor 10 and the thrombin, uh, keeping them from activating. Now, if you do wanna learn more about the clotting cascade, drop a comment right down below and I'll make sure we get to it. Okay, that wraps up the pathophysiology portion of this series. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did learning about the histamines and the heparin, prostaglandins, everything. Ah, so fun. All right, so next up, as I said before, we got pharmacology coming in. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Click the like and subscribe right down below. And thanks again for joining and learning with me here today at White Line Medicine.